James, it's so great to see you. How are you? How are things going and how are you holding up? Uh, I have a great life. I'm a lucky guy. You are a lucky guy. You you picked some good roles over the years. I have to say, we met, I think, three million years ago for one of your earlier projects. And oh my goodness, just following your career over the years, I've always been a huge fan of yours. So congratulations on everything. Well, that's very kind of you. I, where did we meet? Oh, way back when, Mr. I could have, I think it was drugstore cowboy. Oh, wow. A couple of years back we go. We're about the same that's age. So. That, well, <laughs> wow. I'm impressed that you remember. Remember, I, you were always a big standout for me because also I was a huge fan of the show ER. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I worked on yeah. that a little bit. You did work on that a little bit. Yeah. I, I noticed yeah. these things, I have to tell you, and I, I remember them. But um, you did such a fantastic job in Foxhole. I, I don't even know where to begin with this because... What an ambitious project. Here you've got this young whippersnapper director, you know, 20 years old, 20 odd years old, taking this on. You see this script, you see what you have to do, three different wars, you're playing, you know, soldiers at three different times. What was your initial reaction to going into this project? Uh, my initial reaction when I first read the script is they're never gonna get the money to pull it off. Yeah. And lo and behold, I don't know if they ever did get the money, but they did pull it off. Yes, they did. Um, and, uh, you know, Jack uh, has been schooled in uh, the, the theater of, of, of limited resources. So you've, it informs the writing in a way that, you know, people, independent filmmakers at a certain price point can achieve what's on the page. And so he's very clever that way. Yeah, um, but even with all of your experience, you're such a veteran and like I said, you've done so many great roles. Did this one Thank scare you. you at all? Uh, no, because I trust those guys and I like those guys and I have a lot of working experience with them. So what the thing that was, I mean, just in a sort of like my petty little life way scary was <laughs> that while I was shooting that, you know, when I'd finished shooting that, I'd be driving back, you know, the two hours back to the city and I was working on this TV show, um, Hunters. Yes, oh um, yeah, Hunters. I and I never saw it, I, I, people say it was good, but um, so that, you know, so I was kind of going back and forth between these things with a very, very little turnaround in between. Yeah. So that was the thing that, that was the most frightening for me, it was like, could I get, you know, could I get myself to do it? Real <laughs> interesting I, because, um, well, tell me a little bit about the process, James, because I, listen, playing a soldier anytime, movie, TV, whatever, it's such a huge responsibility. It's a lot of pressure. You know, you want to do these guys justice. They're sure. out there trying to save your country and, you know, sure. what well, kind of mindset? Honor, yeah, it, absolutely. So what kind of mindset do you go into doing something like this as an actor when you're portraying these guys? You know, I think it's kind of the sort of the same sort of, port of entry, whether butcher, baker, candlestick maker, doctor, lawyer, or soldier. Right. Um, you know, you try to gather whatever information you can that you think is relevant. Uh, and then, you know, it's, it's an interpretive art. I played a few soldiers in various movies over the years and, uh, mm -hmm. and he draw on that a little bit as well. Yeah. Um, and yeah, but also it's three different wars. So from what I understand, they were all shot like you did the Civil War, then you did yeah. World War One, and then you did the Iraqi War. Take me just, you know, a little bit. I don't want to go into too much detail, obviously, but sure. how that was always so you would because obviously small budget, you have a little bit of time, you're it's you're in this, you know, little secluded area. Yeah. Um, so you take me through that because you would do the first war, then the second and then the third. Yeah, you know. Basically, they were very conscious about like what goes into the frame. And so you try to limit the aspects of going into what went into the frame. And that informs like depth of field and certain technical things with the camera. Um, so for two of those uh, sequences, the World War I and the, uh, and the Civil War, it was primarily shot, you know, in this foxhole, but under the coverage of this tent. Right. That we were later a able to create a sort of a visual illusion of, you know, fog or dark night or, you know. Uh, and then with the uh, the third one, 
uh, it was largely interiors inside the vehicle. And then we did make a trip to California to the high desert uh, and shot on this, um, this uh, lake bed. Yeah. Wow. Um, How well, you know, they were, just, they were just clever and economical about like what they needed to be in the frame. And again, this is a group of people that get very high production value with very modest resources. Amazing. Yeah. Because you know, and the other thing too is, like, when you try and do something like this, you know, there's a lot of crossover between departments behind the camera, and so everybody, whether it's you know, perhaps you know a colleague working in props or costume or whatever, they all have to come at it with a filmmaker's point of view. Mm -hmm. It really, it really helps that way to have people thinking creatively all the time rather yeah. than just staying in their quote unquote lane. Yeah. And, and when you're working um, in such close quarters with your co-stars, obviously like I can't, it, it makes you think, I guess it makes you just appreciate life so much about what these guys go through in war, in a foxhole yeah. and what they have to, you know, do you think about stuff like that? Yeah. I, you know, I think it only gets you so far. Um, I mean, most of, of my friends that have served in, in active duty kind of combat was, you know, they really weren't fighting for a cause or they were kind of fighting to stay alive and to keep their their brothers and sisters in arms alive as well. Yeah. That was really what they were fighting for. And 100%. It just, I think it makes you think while well, you watch this film too about what these guys go through and how you have, you know, they're sometimes just so underappreciated. I would say so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 really a quite an amazing job, you know, uh, uh, film. Sorry, I was saying to you earlier, you know, so many things that you've been in. You you mentioned um, the hunters, like, oh, yeah. you know, like uh, Mosquito Coast. Love oh, yeah, it. I'm a TV aholic, yeah. so I watch pretty much everything. Uh, Justified. I mean, The Passage. Oh, wow. Ali oh, McBeal. Wow. Let's just look back at yeah. Memory Lane with you know James. I mean, honestly, a lot what of jobs. really changed your life what was the role for you that just changed your life oh wow well i'm still waiting for it it has oh come on come yet. on seriously this has been a small series of baby steps honestly I, I i look at you know this is i turned pro in 1982 actors equity was my first union and um you know i had a lot of luck in the beginning and a lot of kindness from strangers yeah and then, you know, and then a thing that happens, like at this point in my journey, you know, you just, it, it, it get, luck never leaves it because now the only people that are, that are left, that are my age, that I would be perhaps competing for jobs for, everybody's great. Yeah. When I think of that Mosquito Coast job, I remember I auditioned for them. And as I came out of the room, I ran into a guy, I can't remember his name, wonderful actor. And I, I'd worked with him many years ago on, I think it was where the day takes you. Yeah. And I, and I just thought to myself, oh God, that guy's so good. Of course he's going to get this part. He's wonderful. He's way more, you know, and for whatever reason they picked me and it wasn't because I was better or anything like that. I doubt. I just think, you know, they just thought, yeah, that guy will solve that problem. It, you yeah. know, just such a subjective thing. Yeah, a hundred percent. But you know, you're being very humble here because you're, you're so. No, 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 I don't think I am. I think I'm being accurate. Honestly, I think at this point, the only people left, everybody's great. Everybody's great. Everybody oh, works really hard. Yeah, you know? no, no, 100%. You, picked, you yeah. know, it's a subjective thing. There's a lot of moving parts. There's just such a heavy factor in luck in all of it. Like just the fact that how we got born. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, listen, I, like I say, you, you, well, you pick them well. And we're going to also see you just have its debut at Cannes, Kelly Reichardt's new film. Oh, yeah, Actually, Kelly. Yeah. I love Kelly. Tell me a little bit about working with her because she's just, she truly is one of my favorite directors. Yeah, uh, I've worked with her a couple times now. Yeah. And, um, you know, she has a really good, uh, she has a really good sense of the truth. Um, and, uh, and, you know, and then it just is kind of like, um, you know, it's, she has a good sense of, of the ironic at all times. And uh, I think that's a very subtle gift. 
you know, also too, she has great command of her vision and she knows the movie she's going to make. And without being rigid, you know, she's able to adapt to circumstances, you know, with great alacrity. But um, yeah, she's a, she, uh, I would never, I would never want to be on her wrong side. I could, <laughs> she kind of scares me a little bit. Um, no, I don't think you're on our really side. Honest. Yeah, I just want to lastly wrap up by asking you because you've been in so many great series and and so many good films. But do you prefer one over the other? Do you like to have that um, capability of fleshing out a character over the the length of a series, or do you like to just get in and do your movie and get out? Well, you know, I don't really think I have a preference. I think it's like all these things. Like, what are you doing? Who are you doing it with? And where are you doing it? And, and that, you know, that kind of defines it. And as far as my choosing anything, I, you know, I think it's chosen me. I don't, I can't really take credit for it, you know. You know what? You're being so awfully humble because I'm telling you, I think you have a book in you. You must have some great <laughs> stories. No, I don't have any books in me. I don't have anything to teach anybody. But, um, but uh, I do, the longer I do it, the more I realize what a factor of luck is in all of it. I mean, just staying healthy for a long time is, yeah. is a factor of luck. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm glad you're staying healthy. I'm glad you keep working, keep giving us more great stuff like this. And uh, what a pleasure to talk to you. Come back and visit us in Toronto sometime again, okay? All right, well, thanks for taking the time to talk to us. Of Thank course, you. James, have a great day and best great. of luck to you. Thank you, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.